Hi guys, my name is Tom and in this video I'm going to talk about the lineup of lenses from Zeroe. These are the Venus anamorphic lenses uh, and uh, more specifically I'm going to talk about these two new lenses. I've already reviewed individually uh, these two lenses, which is the 50mm and the 75mm. But now, uh, as of today, Siri has officially released two more lenses in this lineup. Uh, and that's the 35mm focal length and the 100mm. And also Siri has released this adapter, which is a 1.25 squeeze aspect ratio anamorphic adapter that works with these lenses and actually with any other lens. Uh, but essentially when you're using it with these lenses, it will now convert these lenses to two times uh, squeeze aspect ratio anamorphic lenses. So, if, in case you haven't seen my review of these two previous lenses, what are uh, these new lenses from Ciroe? Uh, they're essentially the most affordable uh, anamorphic lenses for full-frame mirrorless cameras. All of these lenses come with an aperture of T2.9 and an anamorphic squeeze aspect ratio of 1.6x. And these lenses will essentially work with any mirrorless camera that has either an E-mount, which is the case with the lenses I, I have up here, uh, but also you can get them in different versions with uh, L-mount, Z-mount or RF-mount. When it comes to the build quality, these two new lenses are just as solidly built as the two, two that I've already reviewed. They're all metal construction, they're marked both in metric and imperial settings, um, and also you'll notice that uh, all of the, the focus rings and also the aperture rings are geared, just as the other two lenses, and they all perfectly line up, so they're at the exact same distance from the lens mount. And that's something really that you should be looking for when you're looking at like real professional cinema lenses because when you're using this on, uh, on like a real film shoot where you're gonna have a big camera rig built up with rails and uh, maybe remote follow focus and aperture you know, controls and all that stuff, then the last thing you wanna do is whenever you have to switch lenses to then have to reconfigure your follow focus and all these things. Well, again, with these lenses, you don't have to because the aperture uh, and the focus rings are exactly in the same spot for all these lenses, which just means that you can work with these lenses a lot faster.
comes to the, the image quality and the kind of look you're going to get with these lenses, uh, all of these lenses, uh, considering that these are anamorphic lenses, are surprisingly sharp. Now they will give you those kind of anamorphic characteristics, main one being the obviously the uh, wider field of view, uh, but also you're going to get the oval bokeh in your out of focus highlights. You're also going to get those horizontal lens flares and if you have a really strong light source uh, you'll be able to get this horizontal blue st light streak. Uh, now if I know some people are kind of uh, sometimes complaining when they look at these lenses or some of the other anamorphic lenses saying oh well I like everything but I don't like those horizontal lens flares. Well I gotta tell you these lenses just like with any lens really if you want to minimize the lens flares there's lots of different ways of doing it just even by controlling the exposure on your camera using matte box different filters things like that so uh, if you do want to have really noticeable uh, lens flares with these lenses that are very specifically those horizontal uh, anamorphic lens flares then yes you'll be able to get them with these lenses but also like i said if you want to minimize them or just not have them show up at all then that's also possible. And if you guys really want to see what I mean, then just take a look at these lens flare tests that I've done with all these lenses side by side, and you'll be able to kind of see just how drastically different the lens flare and, and how drastically more or less noticeable these lens flares can be. Again, just depending on your lighting situation and all that stuff. By the way, if you guys want to see the full uh, version of all of these camera tests and lens flare tests that I've done and all that stuff, then as always, head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com uh, because uh, it's just it's way too long. I'm not going to fit into this video, but over there you, you guys can go to my latest post and you'll be able to see all of these camera tests and you'll be able to see it in different aspect ratios and uh, full resolution and all that stuff. And you can kind of watch it and really sort of compare how each of these lenses perform and also how they perform uh, together with this uh, 2x uh, anamorphic adapter or essentially an adapter that converts these to 2x anamorphic lenses. As is the case with most anamorphic lenses, uh, when it comes to the look of them, uh, they have a lot of what you can call, I guess, imperfections. Uh, while some people who really embrace the anamorphic look will say that it's the kind of characteristics of uh, anamorphic lenses that they really love about them. Uh, so definitely, if you're going for the, the sharpest, cleanest image, then you shouldn't be getting into anamorphic lenses because by nature, anamorphic lenses distort the image. They capture a wider field of view and then they squeeze it onto an image sensor and then in post when that image is de-squeezed there will be always some artifacts introduced. But when you're comparing these lenses to many other anamorphic lenses on the market, especially some of these really beloved uh, vintage anamorphic lenses, you'll notice that these are exceptionally sharp and don't have as many of these artifacts. Now when you're for example shooting with the 35mm you will get uh, just as again with all other anamorphic lenses on the wider field of view spectrum you'll get, especially in the corner, some of these distortions. And this happens even with like big budget, you could say, uh, anamorphic lenses that have been used on really big budget films. Uh, so you'll notice that in the corners, because again, that's just uh, you know, how anamorphics work. Uh, and then the, the longer the focal length you get, like for example, in this case, the 100 millimeter, the less of that distortion you'll get, but you'll get, uh, for example, a lot more of these sort of uh, oval bokeh distortions. Uh, and the really, really shallow depth of field. 
And what I also like about these lenses is that uh, aside from the, the really typical uh, horizontal lens flare that you're gonna get with, with most anamorphic lenses, and like I said, you can really control that, minimize it or, or really maximize it depending on the situation. Aside from that, what I like about these lenses is that if you point them uh, at just the right angle towards different light sources, where the kind of the light kind of almost reflects off the, the, the front uh, glass elements, uh, you'll get these really nice sort of blooming effects with these lenses that just make it look uh, a lot more organic and again, give you the sort of classic anamorphic look. So the focus distance, or more specifically the minimal focus distance uh, with these lenses is something to be aware of and this is simply a limitation of anamorphic lenses in general. Uh, they're all going to usually suffer when it comes to not being able to focus really really close to the lens. So uh, these other two lenses again they have their limitations and these are kind of similar these two new. So the 35 millimeter lens uh, the max or the closest focus distance is 0.85 meters or around, well, just under three feet. And the 100 millimeter lens is similar. It's a little bit more than that. It's around three feet, uh, basically minimal focus distance. Now you can, of course, get around that by using diapters, uh, which if you guys watch my review of these other two lenses, you'll see me uh, doing that. And once you put diapters on these lenses, then obviously you can focus as close as you want. You can get, get something even within millimeters of the lens. Like I said before, these lenses have an anamorphic squeeze aspect ratio of 1.6. Uh, well, essentially what that means is that it captures uh, basically 1.6 more times of a wider field of view horizontally and then squeezes that onto your uh, camera's image sensor. So depending on which camera you pair these lenses with, in which mode you're shooting in, you're gonna get different aspect ratios. So if you're using this, like I am, for example, using them with a standard 16 by nine uh, aspect uh, video camera, or in my case, it's the Sony a7S III, once the final image is de-squeezed in post, uh, you'll end up with a 2.8 to one aspect ratio, which is slightly more widescreen, you could say, uh, than the traditional uh, cinema scope of 2.4 to one, aspect ratio. Now, of course, uh, you can always punch in or zoom in, cut off the corners, and you'll still get that 2.4 to 1 uh, image aspect ratio. Now, if you do that, you're going to obviously lose a little bit of the resolution in your image, uh, unless you're shooting with certain cameras that shoot even higher uh, resolutions. Or, for example, you can get certain cameras. There's not many on the market right now that are mirrorless cameras, but there are some that will allow you to shoot in a 3 to 2 aspect ratio which is meant for anamorphic lenses. And if that's the case, then when you pair these lenses with those cameras, then your final discrease image is actually gonna be a 2.4 to one uh, cinema scope uh, aspect ratio. Now, if you pair this adapter with these lenses, then like I said, these lenses become uh, two times anamorphic lenses. And then 
you really, I would say, if you want to use these lenses then with cameras that can shoot open gate or 3 to 2 uh, aspect ratio because if you're shooting on a 16 by 9 camera, I mean, not to say you can't use them, uh, and again, you guys can check out some of the camera comparisons here, you'll notice that, especially on the wider angle, uh, for example, like this 35 millimeter, uh, you're gonna start seeing the edges of the lens, and that's because uh, two times anamorphic lenses are, were never meant to be used on 16 by 9 image sensor cameras. So in that case, you really are gonna be better off if you're just shooting on a camera that has proper uh, two times anamorphic shooting mode, like a three to two uh, aspect ratio, uh, so that then you're not filming those edges of those lenses. Or again, you can punch in even more to get the 2.4 to one uh, cinema scope aspect ratio, but then you're really losing a lot of uh, resolution. Now again, if you're shooting with a 4K or a 6K camera, uh, and, uh, and you're, let's say, finishing your project in HD, then it won't really matter. You still have plenty of resolution. Uh, but if you do care about having as much resolution as you can, then you're probably better off pairing these lenses with this adapter with a camera that has a true two times anamorphic shooting mode. This adapter, like I said, is a 1.2x squeeze aspect ratio. It's essentially an anamorphic front uh, lens adapter that you're gonna put on these lenses, or you can actually use this uh, with any other regular spherical lenses or even some of the other anamorphic lenses that are on the market, like for example, some of the other anamorphic lenses that Siri released, which have 1.33 squeeze aspect ratio, which with this, it's gonna give you even wider, even more noticeable uh, squeeze aspect ratio or more noticeable anamorphic uh, sort of characteristics. Um, now, if you've ever gotten into the cinema of like indie anamorphic lenses, then you've probably experimented already with adapting either spherical lenses using some of these adapters that people have made or that were available on the market before, or uh, maybe you use like projection lenses and then try to use that. Uh, but you know, a lot of these setups basically were very clunky. What I mean by that is that the second you put an adapter like this on the front, uh, then you, the biggest problem actually you would have is with focusing, is because you would have your, your main lens that you would have to focus and then your frontal lens element and, uh, and essentially you would have to be focusing them both at once, which becomes pretty much impossible, which again means that usually when people were using these adapters, uh, they just couldn't do rack focusing. Well, now, if you just, for example, were to get just this adapter and to, you know, you're going to pair it up with your other spherical or other anamorphic lenses, uh, well, this thing works beautifully. First of all, it has an 82 millimeter thread here on the back that you can attach to your, your lenses and you can actually get, obviously, step up, step down rings uh, so you can adapt it to different lengths. And the way that you work with these is that, again, you'll thread this on top of your lens and then once you put this adapter in the front of your lens, Essentially what you do to get around the whole focusing issue is you set the main lens focus distance to infinity and then you just simply focus with the ring here uh, on the adapter, which is again a geared focus ring. Now another problem with a lot of these adapters was also, first of all, attaching it to the actual lens and then afterwards getting it lined up, meaning uh, because anamorphic frontal elements, again, they take in a wider field of view and they kind of squeeze it, means that if the front element was just a little bit off to one side, then your whole image just be becomes very skewed and then afterwards when you desqueeze it, you would just see these weird distortions and everything's basically skewed in one direction. Well, see so we get around it by, uh, again, making it very easy. You just thread it under to, you know, as tight as you can uh, to attach it to, to the front of your lens, but then to be able to adjust the angle of the actual adapter, you have this red button here and you just press that and that allows you to now rotate this adapter 360 degrees and then once you find a position that you like you just let go of the button and it kind of has these stepped uh, basically gears I guess inside and it just locks it in that position for you and it doesn't wiggle it just stays perfectly in that position and it doesn't need like some of these other adapters in the past you needed to have like little thumb screws or something to hold it in place and then it just simply meant that if you wanted to like actually use one of these anamorphic adapters with a bunch of lenses then swapping the lenses and putting the adapter it was just really time consuming whereas with this adapter I can honestly say it is very very fast it's like putting on like an ND filter or something in the front of your lens you just thread it under and then you just quickly go with this 
red button and you just make sure the easiest way to actually make sure that this is you know perfectly aligned horizontally is to look at a light source so you get like those horizontal lens flares and then you just rotate it till the lens flare is nice and horizontal in your camera and then let go of the button that's it and like i said this adapter now can be used with these lenses which will essentially convert them to two times anamorphic lenses and i think that's why uh, siri decided to release them at this time uh, because again, it just makes this whole set of lenses uh, that much more usable for a lot of people out there who, for example, want to shoot anamorphic, uh, and, but can't afford some of these really, really crazy expensive uh, anamorphic lenses, but they want those ones because they're two times anamorphic squeeze aspect ratio. Well, again, now you can get these ones and you can use them both on 16 by 9 image sensor cameras, but for example, with this adapter, you can use them on true anamorphic uh, mode shooting cameras. Now, one thing to be aware of is that these are not the only lenses that Siri will be releasing. So uh, there is actually going to be one more lens uh, for this lineup with the 1.6 uh, squeeze aspect ratio and that are going to be again a full frame uh, lens for mirrorless cameras with the T2.9 and all that stuff, but it's going to have a focal length of 135 millimeters, so even longer focal length, which I think then it's really gonna make it this a complete lens set that can definitely be used on any project. And that lens is gonna be coming out sometime in December of this year. But another set of lenses that Siri is gonna be releasing are uh, two times anamorphic lenses uh, that will not need to be using any of these adapters anymore. They're just gonna be natively two times anamorphic lenses and those will be coming out sometime next year. And I don't know whether they're all gonna be released throughout the year or the first one released and when and all that stuff. I don't know exactly whether they're full frame or not, but that's definitely something that's uh, exciting news simply because knowing that uh, Siri produces good quality products, but they also do it at a reasonable price. So again, if you guys are looking for affordable, full frame anamorphic lenses uh, that have this typical anamorphic characteristics, but yet they're also sharp and all that stuff, then definitely uh, check out these lenses from Siri. And, and if you want to save uh, $220 actually per each of these lenses, uh, then head on over right now to their Indiegogo page. I'm going to provide the link in the description. Uh, but also if you want, again, you can buy these other lenses and all the links for where you can get all this stuff, including the adapter uh, and the latest prices and all that stuff. As always, uh, check it out on my website at tomantosfilms.com uh, or you can just follow the links in the description of this video. And once again, my name is Tom and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.